Hey coders and welcome to the coding portion of Radix Sort. I added in comments so you have an idea of what we're doing step by step. Let's go and get started. So the first thing we have is our array checks. If array equals null or array dot length equals zero, then we just return. We can't do anything with this. The next thing we need to do is find the max value in the array. We'll first create a max value variable. Just give it uh, the array index of zero value initially. And then we'll go over the array with the for each loop. So for int value array, and we can say uh, max value is equal to math.max, uh, max value and the value. All this does is you give math.max two different values. So we'll give it the max value and then the value from the array. And it's gonna choose which one is bigger and assign it to max value. Okay, the next thing you need to do is start with the least significant digit or the LSD. Again, that is the ones place in any value. So 389, as I used in my explanation video, that means the nine is the least significant digit. So we're gonna have a value or a variable int place equals one. And we'll do some math so that this works out. Okay, we'll see here in a second. The next thing we're gonna do is create the counting sort loop by the digits. So every iteration of the digits in all of the values in the array, this is what's gonna handle how many times we perform counting sort and we're going to do that based on the place that we're at in the value. So from the ones place, the tens place, the hundreds place, thousands, whatever it is. So while max value divided by the place is greater than zero, we're going to perform a counting sort given the array and the place. And then we say place times equals 10 or place equals place times 10. Quick example, if max value is equal to 91, after we have one iteration, so we did this once. So after iteration one, then we say one times 10 equals 10. So the first time max value is 91 divided by place, which is one, that's still 91, that's greater than zero. We go through this, we're gonna now multiply one by 10. So now place is equal to 10. The next time through 91 divided by 10 is nine, that's still greater than zero. We perform counting sort. Now place after two iterations, after two iterations is 10 times 10, which equals 100. Now, after we do that, we go back into the while loop, 100 or 91 divided by 100 is not greater than zero, so we're done. Okay, the next thing is now we're gonna actually perform the counting sort. And we need two things first. We need two different arrays. Say int output equals new int array.length. Basically, whenever we're done and we wanna put the values that are sorted based on the digit, we're gonna put them back into this array. So it's gotta be the same size as the input array. Then we need the counting sort array. So int count equals new int 10. This is hard coded to 10 because we're gonna be using the decimal system. I mean, you could change this to whatever base system that you wanna use, but the only possibilities are zero through nine, which adds up to 10. All right, the first thing we do is we count the occurrences of each digit at the given place or the digit place in the integer. So if it's the ones, tens, or hundreds, and then we count that and put it into the count array. This means that we have to iterate over the input array. So int i equals zero, i is less than array dot length, i plus plus. And then a little bit of math here. So we say int digit equals array, the value at that index divided by the digit place mod 10. So if the value is 91, that's our example, 91 divided by one is 91, mod 10 is one. 91 divided by 10 is nine, but there's one remainder left over and that is what the modulo operator does. It gives us that remainder. So with the value of 91, digit is equal to one. And then for the count array, that's gonna be our index. So at index one, we wanna increment that value. So it started at zero, now it's gonna be equal to one. But we're gonna do that for all of the values in the input array. Now for the count array, the same count array, we need to cumulatively account the values starting from the left to the right. So we're gonna iterate over this array, we're gonna start at one, so int i equals one, i is less than 10 because it's the base 10 decimal system, i plus plus, count of i plus equals count of i minus one. Here's an example. If count of zero, index zero equals two, and count of index one is also equal to two, whenever we go through this, count of Count of one is now gonna be equal to four. We start at int i equals one. So the first time through, count of i is equal to two. 
and then we add that with count of i minus one, which is index zero, which is also two. And then finally, we have to then go through the input array and based on the counting array, we add those values sorted into the output array for int i equals array dot length minus one, minus one. Now we're working from the right to the left of the array. So from the end to the beginning and in counting sort, this is how you ensure that it keeps it stable. If we didn't do this, it would not be stable. And then i is greater than equal to zero, i minus minus. Now we have our for loop set up. The next thing we need to do is get the digit just like we did above. So int digit equals array of i divided by digit place mod 10. And then in the output array, we're going to set the count of the digit minus one is equal to array of i. All right, what does this mean? Well, the digit in the example is like 91. Okay, that's our example. So digit is now equal to one. So the count at index one, whatever that value is, we're going to subtract one. So one minus one, that would be zero. And then at output of zero, we're going to set that to the input array of i, whatever that value is. And then finally, count of digit minus minus. All this means is whenever we find the index of where the input array's value goes, which is based on the occurrence of the digit, well, we took one of the occurrences away from the counting, so we have to subtract one from whatever that value is in the counting array. And finally, we just copy the output array to the input array. We can do this by saying system.array copy. This takes in the source array, so it's just the output. We start at index zero. The destination array is the input array, starting at index zero. And then the int length, just that just means how many values do we want to copy over. So we're going to copy over the array that length number of values. And congratulations, you have just coded radix sort. And of course, we need to test this. So I have these different tests. Uh, this is from the explanation video. And I have this one is interesting, and I'll show you why. So let's go ahead and run this. And as you can see, it performs the sort correctly on all of these. And what was interesting about this original array, I told you that we want to make this a stable sort. So when we, get, when we perform the counting sort, we go from right to the left to put the values back in based on the input array. The reason we do that is because this five right here, the first five, say there were a bunch of other values in this array, this will always be the first five after it gets sorted. This third five, no matter how many values are here in the original array, or where it ends up getting sorted, it will always be the third five in the sorted array. An unstable sort, this third five could be end up being the fifth one, the first one, the second one, you don't know, it's unstable. Just something to think about.